it depends if you count all the seasonal waterfalls. You know, I did include some waterfalls in the book, like Deerbrook Falls in Acadia, which like right now is probably completely dry. Um, you know, do you count that as a, as a regular waterfall? And does it have to be completely vertical or can it be, you know, a slide and count? And do the tidal falls count? So depending on how you count, you could probably get it up to 200 if you worked at it. All right, let's talk about some of your favorites. And the ones that made the cut tend to be ones that are not all that well known. So this is good. This will tell people things that they may not be familiar with. Let's start with Orris Falls in North Berwick. What do you like about this one? It's a surprisingly large waterfall for um, southern Maine and you know, away from the mountains or anything. Um, and it's, it's a very secluded spot. The hiking trails to it are really pretty. Um, it's just a nice um, straight drop. Bad River Falls, this is roughly 20 miles north of Freiburg in Western Maine. What a, what's the appeal here? You come to this overlook with this just magnificent over 100 foot waterfall that drops straight down into this large pool. And through the screen of trees above that waterfall, you can see at least another one more waterfall. I think there's two more. They're almost that large. So it's a very large waterfall falling off the side of the mountain. The cataracts is near Andover, which is near Bethel. What makes this one special? It's um, easy hike, three waterfalls for the price of a little hike. And then the trail comes to the top of the cataract and you can look down um, the top of the waterfall. Uh, which is actually it's two falls total drop of about 60 feet. And then above that, there's a large area of open um, rock that has a really big slide comes down it that um, is called the flume. And um, there's good swimming hole there. It's a good hike. Not nearly as many people go to it as Dunn Falls on the Appalachian Trail, which is um, the way the crow flies only a couple miles away. Let's move on to another part of the state near Brownville and Gulf Hagas. And a lot of people who love the outdoors in Maine are familiar with Gulf Hagas. Haybrook Falls. Right, so again, Gulf Hagas in the summertime is always really crowded. Lots of people hike in to see all the nice waterfalls there and all the other features in that gorge. Um, but when you start at the trailhead, you cross the Pleasant River and then you follow the Appalachian Trail and you come to a junction, turn left and stay on the Appalachian Trail. If you turn right, you go a mile, um, you come to Haybrook Falls, which nobody goes to visit. The name of the book is Hiking Waterfalls, Maine. Most people are going to be drawn to waterfalls more than hiking, but you make yeah. the point that at least half the fun of getting to these places is the hike. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, this is what the seventh hiking guide I've written. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much about the hiking. And um, one of the fun things in doing this guide was it gave me an excuse to go to some places where you're not going to the top of a mountain or you're to the ocean side or whatever. You're going, you know, into the woods, into a hillside or something to find the waterfall. And it's a different kind of hiking. So a lot of guides, they um, rate the waterfalls one through five, you know, five being the most spectacular, the ones you need to definitely visit. But I think that kind of misses the whole point of, you know, it's the experience of getting there and sharing it with your family or whoever you hike with. And, um, you know, if you go swimming and hang out, maybe you'll see some wildlife along the way. And how do you include that kind of thing in the rating? So, so you're right. It's about the journey. All right, let's hit one more. We'll finish with Parlin Falls, which is near Jackman. Right. Um, this is another really remote waterfall. Um, I, it's a really short hike, but I list it as strenuous in the book because to get to see all of the waterfalls, you actually have to do a little bushwhacking which in general I didn't include in the book, but this one was so amazing and so surprising um, that I um, went ahead and did it. When I was there in um, late May, it was about 40 foot drop and the stream where it was coming over this rock face was almost 100, 150 feet across, a very large waterfall. Now I'm assuming if you go up there now, you know, it may only be 20 feet across, but it's a pretty big waterfall. 